What's up, friends and family? It's Brian Castrillo, and wow. So, I just watched episode one of The Terminalist, and that is that is amazing. You can find this on Amazon Prime. I will be doing reviews for each episode here on YouTube, and I'll do my full review, like, of the whole series, and I'll, I'll put a quick review on um, TikTok for that, but yeah, I'll probably even post it on here, but wow. So, episode one was phenomenal but let me just tell you something before i get into this is of course i am former u.s navy myself i was stationed on board the uss constitution also known as old ironsides it is the oldest commissioned warship afloat in the world today the only active commissioned warship to have sunk a, a navy vessel and it fought in the war of 1812 has an amazing history if you love history like i do look up um uss constitution it is of course docked in mass um charlestown naval yard in boston massachusetts um, absolutely, if you, if you love history, go visit it, or at least just read up on it, it's fantastic, um, and before I got that duty, um, when I went to the Navy, one of the things I wanted to be was a Navy SEAL, I really wanted that trident, and I just thought, you know, everything, I was just, just enamored by their presence um, and what their role was in the in the U.S. military, but being from Massachusetts, they offered me the job, you know, the command of the U.S. Constitution. I I just couldn't say no. That all being said, I want to start on this movie, or not actually a movie. It's a series on Amazon Prime called The Terminal List, starring Chris Pratt, who plays um, Commander. Um, excuse me, um, James Reese, and wow, was this performance, this is just episode one, and I'm blown away, and his brother is played by Ben Edwards, um, I'm sorry, his brother's name in the, in the series is Ben Edwards, played by Taylor Kitsch, and another character that I really enjoyed was, um, Katie, Katie Burnick, she is the reporter. She's played by Constance Wu, who put in a great performance there. Um, and also, Patrick Schwarzenegger is in there, and he um, he is he um, he he is the son of Arnold and Maria Schwarzenegger, of course, grandson of J JFK. Um, I just thought that was interesting that he is in the series and he is playing one of the Navy SEALs. Um, of SEAL Team 7, who is underneath um, James Reese, of course, played by Chris Pratt. And Chris Pratt is one of my favorite actors, and he just put in another brilliant performance. Um, the man is an amazing actor. I hope someday I get to meet him. Um, but yes, let's get down to this. Now, in the beginning, you see they're giving the um, the formal, you know, the mil full military funeral for the the Navy SEALs that have that have passed and that's how the series begins episode one and and you see chris pratt who is leader um he flashes back to this moment and this is of course off the coast of syria and they are on this mission to you know take out this bad guy and it, it appears they get some really bad intel and they're they're set up and one even one of the as they're going over the plans one of you know the seal team seal team members even as they were talking about going to this tunnel, it's like, do we trust this guy that's giving this information? And Pratt's saying it's, you know, it's coming from someone who played in this, um, these tunnels as a kid. And they, you know, the people that they're looking for killed his family. So, you know, he said this is personal. That's why they need to trust him. But once they go on this mission, everything goes wrong. Um, they're ambushed and pretty much everyone is taken out except for you know, Chris Pratt's character and and one other. And they they keep they're they're kind of going back and forth a little bit um of these events to the present day. And the present day, you know, he's going he's getting interviewed by um you know various military commanders and doctors and whatnot who are basically telling him that you know, one of his men um, who died, he, you know, he wasn't well. And they're just trying to, it, and they're giving him all this information. And it, 
it looks as though, you know, Chris Pratt's character has clear PTSD. I mean, which, which makes sense coming from that type of battle. Um, and he had a, there, he, I guess he had a concussion and, and he appears to have some, some issues definitely, but his mind is still sharp on certain things. Now there's a moment where he's even, um, taking out the cinnamon rolls at his house and he picks it up with his bare hands and then it takes him a while, a minute, you know, where, before I realize that it's burning him. And that even kind of made me jump a little bit. Um, and so the military seems to be looking for someone to blame and someone to pin this on. There's, there's something, there's some sort of disconnect. And I want to just say, I have not read this book, but this book, everything I'm hearing about is really good. It was a number one bestseller. Um, and it was written by Jack Carr. So, I mean, if you haven't read the book, uh, I mean, it, from everything I'm seeing, it looks like a good book. I may go back and read it myself. But anyways, now to present time, like, um, you know, he's, his, he's picked up his brother, but, um, his brother, Ben, who's played by Taylor Kitsch, who has been in another, who has done some great military movie work past, but his brother, um, you know, picks him up and he's talking about, you know, who do you know that could possibly do, you know, deep fakes and could copy their digital signature and because Chris Pratt's character is very, you know, suspicious of what's going on because what they're telling him in these interviews is like, it does not make sense. It doesn't compute. He even says, you know, I never said these things. It doesn't make sense. But, but you're also seeing signs of PTSD from Chris Pratt's character and, and you're, and man, this this is just so well done. And you're you're questioning, is Chris Pratt right? You know, I mean, it wouldn't shock me that the you know the government's trying to cover up something, but you're questioning you know his mental acuity because he he of course went through this and and they wanted him to get a CAT scan um, or rather an MRI and to see if his brain is okay. And initially he says no to it. Um, to that but he comes home um he's having you know these these rather emotional moments with his wife with my goodness the, just these scenes are phenomenal and there's a there's also a moment where we meet um katie burnick she is the reporter who's trying to figure out you know what what had happened she wants to talk to chris pratt and his character is like no i no i don't think so but these they're making Chris or I I'm just gonna go by James that's his character's name but James question what what did he did he know is he forgetting you know what what it all happened and you know he eventually you know emails her and says was I there alone meanwhile he goes over to his you know that when, when he met this character um Katie Burnack he was with his only surviving member of SEAL Team Seven and during this moment and that's what he emailed her about was he alone but he went to his house because he got a call and apparently he had killed himself but they're saying you know that the timeline doesn't match up and he killed him he died he killed himself two days ago but chris pratt was saying that he was with him the day before so like they're literally filling his head with these these thoughts that, you know, everything he's saying is wrong and that he and his brain isn't functioning right. But he, you know, James is, is thinking that, you know, that not, things do not add up. They don't make sense. You know, his, what he knows of his friend and, and he, you know, he's, and he's talk, um, well, I, I will say as former military that the people you serve with your shipmates, um, where they're more than them friends and and I'm sure my fellow military um familia will vouch for that that these are some of your closest people that you because you've been through a lot of stuff together and and these are some of the closest people that you will know and so they're more they're more family than friends but and so he he knows them and and you and throughout the this this episode you know he's even talking about you know things that are are clear like he knows you know what 
type of gun he prefers and why and, and the exact reason he came to this conclusion. There's, there's different scenes that are just kind of spelling this out, how he knows and how close, you know, he is with his, his team members. But he doesn't believe it. So eventually he decides to go and get this, um, you know, the MRI. And he goes there and the doctor, you know, puts him in and... You know, he's sitting there for a while and he and he's just having these flashbacks of everything that happens. And then then it kind of gets quiet. You hear this like um, this noise and eventually he's coming out and you see a guy who's um, kind of reminds me of the purge. He's wearing this mask um, and he, you know, he has the the gun pointed right at him at James and as he's coming out and he notices, he looks up and he sees through the window, the doctor has a hole in his head. He of course was taken out. There was two guys and, and it was just slowly, it looked like they were trying to take him Pause. I, I don't know. I don't know why they didn't just kill him in that moment, but maybe, you know, they were trying to take him prisoner. Um, but so this fight ensues and eventually, you know, James, he ends up killing one of them. One of the guys gets away, but he was clearly wounded. So that's going to come back. And whoever that guy was, I think James or, you know, Pratt's character is going to notice the the wound from the knife. That's That's got to come back into play. Um, and that's going to tip him off because these two guys tried to kill him. And he, of course, thinks of his family, but he realizes the gun that they had he he looks at it and it's his gun. Now you go back um, a few scenes late earlier and he's taking this um, his gun and puts it in a safe, which requires his fingerprint. So somehow they got his gun, and then of course you know Chris's he he re, he remembers this and he he races back. He gets in the vehicle and he's getting back. He's calling the cops saying you know meet me at my house. Something you know something has happened and he gets here, he's swerving in and out of traffic and, and he finally gets to this house and it's completely devastating. His daughter and his, and his wife are, were murdered and he just loses it. You hear the sirens in the background as they're coming. Um, absolutely, you know, devastating. It was like incredibly sad. Like the acting in this is phenomenal. The writing is phenomenal. Just, you know, and, the musical score, the moments, the the way they created the tension in this, um, the the attention to detail, which as former military, you know, attention to detail is big to us. So, and just wow, I cannot wait for episode two. Um, but yeah, so far, you know, without re I can see where this is going. Clearly, the military is trying to. Or the government is trying to cover something up, possibly. But then you also have this, he has, you know, some some level of PTSD, which they're going to blame that on him. Um, that's what I'm assuming is going to happen in episode two, because the cops are coming. Um, but I, again, I didn't read the book. So everything I'm, I'm watching this is fresh, and I have no idea what's coming. But so far, episode one, I am blown away. This is... Um, Phenomenal job, Chris. Um, Taylor Kitsch, excellent job. I, I love Constance Wu in here. Um, the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger's son is in here is 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 really cool too. Um, but yeah, if you're not watching this series or haven't watched it already, start watching it now. It's on Amazon Prime. Watch it with me. Um, this is episode one. I five stars. This this fantastic. Absolutely loved it. And yeah, I, what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this as much as I did. If you if you watch the whole thing, just try and comment on episode one because I don't want to spoil this for people who haven't seen it or you know or for myself because I I'm only on episode one. But yeah, let me know in the eps, in the in the comment section what you thought of this. Um, yeah, let's let's do this. Love you guys.